How's it going guys? Jose from uh, San Diego Commercial Real Estate Show and today I'm here with James Bengala. How's it going everybody? Good to see you. And today we're going to talk about selling your business. And so, you know, the first question you might want to ask is, okay, wait a minute. So real estate agents sell businesses? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, you know, why should somebody, you know, a business owner come to a real estate broker to sell their business? Uh, two key uh, ingredients to this when when you're working with a commercial broker they're going to have um, a developed network mm -hmm. right of other brokers of other business owners and they're going to have a, a quick avenue to get in front of as many qualified buyers or sellers um, as possible versus you putting out a craigslist ad or just something that's just going to be generic and out there in front of a bunch of people and then the second are the resources on top of the network, they're gonna have access to a bunch of different commercial specific websites mm -hmm. and industry specific websites where they can blast the the, the purchase or the um, sell the business as well. And chances are, you know, just be, by being involved with, with commercial real estate, you're gonna have a bunch of people in your network that are similar to the business that's being sold at the that's time, right? right? So that's right. That's a, that's a powerful resource to, to have. Having that, you're gonna have a lot more qualified Buyers right. or sellers, which is going to move things along quicker. That's right. And so, you know, I, I guess another, another question, you know, business owners might have is, you know, how do I value the the business itself? Like, what are what's the sale price going to be start at? Yeah, that's that's a tricky one. Um, but typically, each industry has its own multiplier. So, whereas uh, we were talking about this earlier, mm -hmm. property management industry with an established property management company might have a a four to five times multiplier. Um, a coin op laundry business um, without any branding might only have a two, two and a half times multiplier. So that's the that's the first and most important metric to get a to get a baseline on the on the uh, valuation. And then you have two items that are intangibles. One is goodwill. The other is the brand equity. And so that really goes into knowing your marketplace and knowing who the business is and what they do. Right. So it's not just simply about the numbers and the amount of equipment you have and the value of all that stuff, but maybe the intangible stuff, stuff is important as well. Correct. Right. Correct. Whereas, let's say a gym that has been um, established in the San Diego community for 30 years and has this name brand and this presence versus a gym that's um, same square footage, has the same equipment, but they've only been around three years, mm -hmm. it's going to be valued less because okay. of the, the lack of goodwill and the lack of brand equity. Right. Okay. So, you know, maybe the next question might be, uh, what should I do before I put my business on the market? Um, this is, this is a key component in a lot of what we've discussed with buyers and sellers and, um, even with some tenant related videos we've done is get your finances in order. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that your, your finances are bulletproof. So get with your CPA or whoever does your taxes, get your three years of tax returns, get profit and loss statements, get your balance sheets, and get your bank statements. And um, the the more bulletproof your finances look, the, the higher valuation you're going to receive. And then when it comes to the negotiating table, you'll be able to stand your ground and actually you know, dig in and, and fight for the top dollar versus if you're missing a year of tax returns or if you don't have a current P&L or whatever, then the whole story isn't there and the potential buyer could start poking holes in your finances and, and they've got some leverage. Yeah, it's funny how that parallels when, when you want to lease a space. All those same things exactly. uh, help you lease uh, and get a better rate on, on leasing in a, a space as well. But also, you know, some of these cash businesses, it's like if you, I understand it helps with the, with, with your taxes, the tax uh, uh, liability and all that stuff, yeah. but if that doesn't show up on paper, they can't evaluate that, right? If you're a, if you're a cash business and your exit plan is to sell down the road, you're gonna. I know this is gonna sound painful at first, but you're gonna have to start documenting your revenues. Yeah, and you're gonna have to start paying taxes on them because it could mean selling a business for five hundred thousand if you're having if you're reporting all your income, or selling it for you know seventy five thousand or hundred right. hundred thousand. Um, so it, it might be painful in the short term, but if you if your exit strategy is to sell, you need to document how much money you're making. Yeah. If you don't do that, then <laughs> the, well, what are they buying? 
right. what are they buying? And you got to do this years ahead. So you might as well just start now and get your books in order and, and document stuff. So, okay. And so another question that they might have is, uh, but I don't want my employees to know we're putting this on sale and it can affect morale. It yeah. can affect a lot of things that, that employees could end up leaving. That's right. So, and this is a common, this is a common question and a com common hurdle that we have to get past with these, some of these sellers. But, um, what we do is, is we do an off market listing, uh, meaning that we're not putting big signage up in front of the building. Um, we're not, um, blasting it out there to everybody, you know, in the community, but rather we're, we're being really specific towards um, sending that message out to the brokerage community, letting them know explicitly that, hey, they don't want their employees involved or to know, keep it hush hush, let your clients know that as well. Uh, don't disturb the business, don't disturb right. the tenants, don't send any of these signs or signals out there. Um, and 95% of the time, the employees stay, the, the seller is happy and in, in a, in a transaction. Yeah, done. good. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, I suppose the, a natural question might be as well is, um, do I have to stick around and teach the new new owner the business? So how does that you know work? You know, it, it really just depends. Um, some owners, some, some new buyers are going to request it. Some are going to require it. And some, if they've already been in the industry and they're, they're experienced in whatever trade or, or whatever service you provide, um, maybe they don't need it. Um, but it's always good to have that available. That consultation period helps them um, take what they know or what they don't know and apply it to your operating procedures and your location with your staff. And at the end of the day, they want you to be successful and you want obviously the most success possible and the most profitability. So that 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 um, transition period can be key. Yeah, so it, it might also come down to, you know, just the way you've documented your your processes and your business, the more you have that laid out, the less the owner will kind of need you to step in and for follow-up questions and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. That, that plays into it as well. So Absolutely. okay. So um, let's say you're looking to buy a business. Should you go to a real estate broker? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of benefits to it. One, again, being the, the network that we're already involved in. We may have access to, to businesses that are for sale that aren't being listed out there for a lot of the same reasons we already discussed. Um, but two, uh, they're gonna help you determine whether the business for sale that you're looking at or that we find is overvalued, is it undervalued, is it a good deal? Are they asking too much? Is the equipment you know, obsolete, you know, they're gonna help you through this process and get a really objective point of view, right? Yeah. Versus being involved in it and being emotional about it and an objective point of view, someone that's got your back is gonna go a long way. Yeah, and one other reason I think that it might be helpful to go to a, a commercial real estate broker to buy a business is they'll, t they'll, they'll have hands-on experience and knowledge about the market that your business exists in, mm -hmm. right? So what are the trends there? Is this a hot market? You know, where's the path of progress going through? You know, what, you know, what's the, what's the economy around that business going right. to be like? And, and as brokers, is this a, is this a dying time. industry? Is it an up and coming industry? Is it plateauing? Where is it at? Is, and what, is the need cycle? in that neighborhood, right? Correct. Correct. Maybe there's six competitors on the other side of the interstate that, you know, already have 95% of the market share. Yeah. You know, so right. how much opportunity is there? Maybe yeah. there's a lot, maybe not. Right. But yeah. Excellent. So James, I appreciate you sharing your experience with us. And you know, how, if, if, you know, your business, a business owner looking to buy or sell a property, or I'm sorry, not a property, a business uh, or property, uh, how should they, they contact you? My, uh, my cell phone is the best method, 760-208-8798. Um, and all this information is going to be listed below as well. That's right. And so if you want to contact me, Jose at Fire uh, Invest X, or just you know, my contact info is going to be below. And like I said, guys, I, we need to hear your, get your feedback on what you, types of uh, episodes you want to see, questions that you have about commercial real estate here in the San Diego market. And I want this to be a user driven channel. So, hey, uh, comment and share your stuff down below. And, um, yeah, so stay tuned for the next episode. Keep hustling, my friends. Talk to you guys later. Cool. Nice.